Welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake, and this is the long-awaited 2022 Toyota Tundra. This one in particular is the 1794 edition. This is one of the topmost trim levels. I'm very excited to finally share with all of you a full review of this 2022 Toyota Tundra and how it tows, especially compared to the last model. The last model of Toyota Tundra was only its second generation. Toyota did give it a facelift and some mid-cycle updates halfway through its long model run, but this one is all new. This is the big exciting update, and it's time to talk all about it as pertains to towing. So with all that, let's dive right in. Before we do, if you have not subscribed already, please be sure to do that sometime during this video. Be sure to like the video if you think this is all really rad, and you know, if you don't, go ahead and do those things anyway. Thank you so much, and now on to the 2022 Toyota Tundra. So first of all, what is the 2022 Toyota Tundra? Well, like I said, this is a completely clean sheet redesign of the old Tundra. You can tell, of course, from the styling from the front all the way to the back. It is very different from the outgoing model, and for good reason. The old model ran for a very long time, and Toyota wanted to do something that looked completely different, very modern, and something that clearly stands out on the road as being a new Tundra. So they have done it. Whether you like it or not, the grill on these trucks is gigantic. Now this is one of many, many grill options that you have here based on the trim level you pick. The front end of this truck will look fairly different. Now what is not different between all these trucks is the drivetrains. Toyota has ditched the long running 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8. For better or for worse, a lot of people were big fans of that motor, but it was time to do something else. And they have moved to a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. They're not the first people to do this. Ford did it a long time ago with their EcoBoost V6, but Toyota is doing it here, and they are offering it as the only drivetrain option in the 2022 Tundra. You've got this one here in my test truck, which is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, or they're offering that same engine as a hybrid setup, which adds a decent amount of power, a decent amount of torque, and bumps your fuel economy ratings. Now, as far as power and torque, with this model that is not the hybrid, just the twin turbo 3.5, it is 389 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. Fairly healthy. I think Toyota probably could have done a little bit more, and I'm guessing they went a little conservative on the tune for the sake of reliability. They try to be that reliable brand, that long-standing brand, and that 5.7 in particular was a very reliable engine, so I think they want these to be pretty similar as far as reliability is concerned. They're probably keeping the tunes and everything a bit conservative. Now we don't have the hybrid available to test yet. We will of course request one when they are here and available. We'll see how they stack up back to back. Either way, whether you have the 3.5 twin turbo or the 3.5 twin turbo hybrid, you're going to have a 10 speed torque converter automatic transmission that sends power to either the rear wheels or all four wheels. You could still get a Tundra as a two wheel drive truck in certain trim levels. This one of course is four wheel drive with selectable four wheel drive. So it runs as two wheel drive normally, and then you've got four high and four low. Now this particular Tundra is a 1794 edition, which if you think of Ford's truck trim levels, it's kind of like their King Ranch. If you think of Chevrolet, it's kind of like their high country. It is a street focused version of their truck, still plenty capable, but it does not have all of those off-road goodies. So you will not find things like a locking rear differential on the 1794. You can get those on other trim levels like the TRD Pro, which again, not here quite yet. If we get one, we will certainly ask for it. But 1794 is one of the top trim levels. It kind of sits next to the Tundra Platinum. It's just one of those differentiating factors of what sort of styling you prefer, what sort of color palette, materials, all of that. They are both pretty nice when you get to this sort of trim level and pricing structure. Now moving to the back of the 2022 Tundra, Toyota has changed a few things as far as how they build all of these, not just the 1794. They have changed how they do their suspension setups. So where the old Tundra used leaf springs, Toyota has moved to independent suspension. Other manufacturers have done something similar in recent years with model updates, and it is for the sake of both better ride quality and allowing you to do more with your truck that is both better on road and off both unloaded and loaded. So in this case, all 2022 Tundras have independent suspension. There are no leaf springs. In the case of my 1794 with the advanced package and a few other trim levels and packages and all that good stuff, you can have both automatic load leveling on the rear, that's with a rear airbag system here, 
and you can have adaptive variable suspension. So that is a set of shock absorbers on the rear and the front that get stiffer or looser based on your drive mode selection and what you were doing with the truck. Like I said, in this case, the 1794 with advanced package has both of those things. You will have to look at different trim levels and options packages based on what you want to see if that's what you're going to get. But all Tundras have independent suspension on them. They have ditched those leaf springs. Now, as far as towing and payload, that is of course a big thing to look at with every new truck you're buying. And every manufacturer seems to want to win in the increasing numbers game, which frankly doesn't matter past a certain point, but that's a whole different topic for a different day. Toyota says the 2022 Tundra equipped properly can tow up to 12,000 pounds and haul up to 1,940 pounds of payload. That is both your tongue weight if you have a trailer, whatever's in the bed, and any occupants in the truck. Now, of course, my 1794 edition being fairly fully loaded is going to have lower numbers than that. It is rated for 10,890 pounds of towing and about 1,500 pounds of payload. So both of those things are still pretty substantial. Now payload in particular, we're going to always check because based on your exact options, your payload may differ from what Toyota claims on their website. This is something no matter what vehicle you buy, whether it's a truck, an SUV, a sedan, whatever, payload is going to be a little different for every vehicle based on the options it has. So let's check the driver's door jam and see what this one actually has on it. So like I said, the 2022 Tundra 1794 edition, which this one is, is officially rated by Toyota for 1,575 pounds. That's the exact number that they state on their website under the dimensions and capabilities portion of their tech specs for this model. Now, what you wanna do whenever you're purchasing a truck is open the driver's door, look at the door jam sticker for all of your listed capacities because payload is one of those things that differs based on all your options. Now in this case, when I look at this driver's door jam sticker, it says the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 1,320 pounds. So that is less than what Toyota says this vehicle can haul based on just the trim level. And that may be because of how this one is actually equipped versus a base 1794. This one has the advanced package. So you get that load leveling suspension in the rear, you get the different shock absorbers, you get a bunch of different options here, plus everything else they've equipped this particular truck with. That may contribute, probably does contribute to knocking that payload number down a little bit versus what they state on the website. Of course, you can look and see which trim levels offer you more payload versus less. And of course, generally it's going to be the lower equipped your vehicle is with less options that are heavy and add weight, the more payload you'll have because the chassis is the same no matter what. Now let's talk about chassis because wheelbase and overall size here are very big things to talk about literally and figuratively. Now, as you can see, this particular 2022 Tundra is a long boy. This is the full Crew Max crew cab that seats uh, five people and has four full-size doors. And this also has the six and a half foot bed. So this is perhaps the longest Tundra you can get. It is 20.5 feet long. It's almost 21 feet long. This is a long truck uh, with this bed, with the six and a half foot bed. Uh, makes it a little tough in apartment parking situations such as yours truly, but it is doable. And the wheelbase, which contributes to your towing stability and your overall ride quality is 12 inches longer if you get that six and a half foot bed versus if you get a five and a half foot bed. That is the standard on most of these trucks with the Crew Max back seat. If you get a shorter cab, you can have an eight foot bed in some cases, but most trucks are probably gonna have this setup of cab here you have five and a half foot or six and a half foot bed. Your wheelbase, which is the distance from your front axle to your back axle is 157.7 inches long. That is very long. It does make it a little difficult to turn in tight scenarios, but that's what you get when you have a truck that is nearly 21 feet long. This is a monster of a vehicle, but if you are going to use all of its capabilities, it is going to be very handy for you to have. Now, the final piece of all of this, when we're talking about all these numbers and specs, of course, is the price. I mentioned earlier, the 1794 edition is one of the top trim levels that they offer. There is one more that was announced a little bit after this truck first came out. It is called the Capstone, and the Tundra Capstone will sit as the very, very top tier of 2022 Tundra on into the upcoming model years. But if you're looking for 
something right below the capstone, this is going to be one of your two options. There's this and that Platinum I mentioned. Now this particular truck, like I said, has the advanced package on it, and the MSRP of this one is $66,395. Now, that does sound like a lot. However, if you compare this to some of Toyota's competition, of course, there aren't that many competitors in this space. You've basically got the Ford F-150, the Ram 1500, the Chevy and GMC twins, the Silverado and Sierra, and the Nissan Titan. When you compare to all of those, this does come across as a pretty good value for what you get. Now, of course, value doesn't mean a whole lot if the truck isn't any good. So there are plenty of videos here on YouTube that talk all about what the 2022 Tundra is, how it's different from the old one, and you know, general driving impressions. But let's take a quick tour of the interior and then we're gonna get to something that most people don't talk about, and that is towing. We took this truck to Hyperfest at Virginia International Raceway and we towed my 20 foot enclosed trailer behind it. My trailer is a 20 foot box with a four foot V nose and it has aluminum construction so it doesn't weigh a whole lot, but loaded up totally, it's about 6,800 to 7,000 pounds. So we'll get into that in just a second. Before we do, let's take a look at this new interior because it is very different from the old Tundra. All right, so hopping into the 2022 Tundra, you can see this one has kind of a light uh, cream colored interior going on very pretty color uh, obviously your opinions may vary but this is a radically different cabin than what toyota had with the old tundra this is very new very improved very different so let's walk you through it just a little bit you've got a lot of controls down here for your different lights for your power running boards uh, trip odometer, different uh, things with your mirrors, your heated steering wheel, all that good stuff is right down here by your left knee. You do have a tilt and telescope steering wheel on this model. Looking at the steering wheel itself, you've got a bunch of controls for both your, uh, your screen here on the dashboard and your audio right here. Moving over to the other side, this is for your cruise control, your lane keep assist, changing tracks right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close the door and turn this on because Toyota has gone screen crazy here. So not only do you have in this particular case a full instrument cluster LCD screen right here, you also have a gigantic infotainment screen in the center console. Now this is a large screen. This is 14 inches of touchscreen. And obviously this is running wireless Apple CarPlay. You can get out of it to Toyota's new infotainment system here, which is very easy to use. Uh, I know other people have covered this in much more detail than I will, but this is a lot of screen. Like I said, this is not standard on every model. It is just on some of them, but there is a smaller variant of this on the other Tundras. Looking further down, you do have a lot of nice hard buttons here for your volume control and then all your climate control here heated and cooled seats, all that good stuff. So you do have auto dual zone climate. Looking further down, there's some controls for uh, Toyota's trailer backup assistance, your 360 degree camera view, um, different controls here. This is for your uh, load leveling suspension. Now if you look up here, Toyota does have some vastly changed camera tech. So you can see it's showing me a view of the Tundra here where I am parked. And based on what you're doing, it will show you a different series of views. So here in reverse, you've got a different view of what's behind you in a 360. You can change all of that here. So very nice that they're giving you all this flexibility. The camera quality itself is fine. I have seen crisper, but it certainly works. And with the screen being so huge, it's a nice touch because you can at least see things, especially important when you're backing up and hooking to a trailer or something like that. Now looking further down, you do have a traditional shifter here for the 10-speed automatic. There is a sport mode and manual gates. This is the only way you can control the transmission and tell it how you want to shift right here. Uh, there are no paddles or anything on the steering wheel. This is a wireless charging pad right here for your phone. This little notch sticking out cannot be moved. It's just what keeps your phone lined up there. Looking a little bit further down, here are some cup holders for you covered behind this nice fake wood. This is your uh, four-wheel drive selector here, and then you've got your drive mode selector and drive mode dial, and then your tow haul button, which we'll get into in a bit with the towing coverage. 
Now this center console is predictably huge. You've got some space here where I've got my sunglasses. You've also got a little covered spot there. And then this does slide open to reveal an entrance into the rest of the storage cubby, or you can slide it closed. Of course, you can open the entire thing and you'll notice this is quite large. There's some phone charging ports, some coin storage, that sort of thing. There's both USB-A and USB-C there. Now this truck does have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. If you want to plug your phone in for those things, you have to use this USB port right here on the dashboard, which means you're gonna have a cord sticking out. I'm surprised they didn't put a cord uh, and port down in the armrest so it could be hidden down there, but it is what it is. Most people will probably end up using wireless. Now looking further up, this does have a digital rear view mirror, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you've got people in the back or things in the bed, this will uh, help get around that. You can of course flip this down and just see uh, regular mirror glass. So easy to flip just like that. Now looking further up, you have your control. Toyota did keep the sliding back window. So the back window will slide all the way down into the back of the cab. You have your controls for your sunshade and your panoramic sunroof. So you do have this very huge, very nice panoramic roof. And then, like I said, that back window goes up and down just like that. So looking at the back of this Tundra, of course, like I said, this is one of the more loaded versions. So uh, some of this will be specific just to some of these top trim levels, but what is not specific is the space in this Crew Max. It is huge. There's plenty of leg room, plenty of space. Let's see if I hop in here. I am very tall. I am over six feet tall. And as you can see, I have plenty of room to stretch out here. So this is a gigantic back seat. Really, really appreciate that. If you look down here behind the center console, you do have controls for not only heated back seats, but ventilated back seats. So you can turn those on if you are on a hot summer day and you're a rear seat passenger, you are still a first class citizen back here. And those are next to, of course, your air vents. You've got some charging ports and a regular household AC outlet down here. Other interesting thing that a few of my friends noticed and appreciated at the racetrack was these manually operated window blinds. So nice help on sunny days or if you're trying to keep sun out of the vehicle while you're driving. If you've got passengers back here, very nice to have those easily retracted into the door. Now you can see panoramic roof goes fairly far back here, but regardless, I still have some pretty good headroom, which is again a nice touch. You've got these cup holders here uh, that can be shared between the front seats and the back seats. Of course, your door pockets also have some room. And then there is an armrest with two more cup holders right here. Now I'll show you how the back seats fold up and move around because that also matters in a truck like this. So all you have to do is grab and pull up and they flip up. Now this is just kind of a storage cubby down here. You can hear the fan going for that rear seat. Let's turn that off. So this is just a storage cubby. You can move the little divider around. Um, I wish the floor was flat. You've got kind of this hump here uh, for the transmission tunnel, and then you've got this uh, storage bin. I think on the hybrid models, this is where the hybrid batteries go, so you may not have this. Uh, don't take that as gospel, but I think that's where they go. So that's probably why they just kept all of this the same for all the different models. Pop the seat back down, you just pull on the strap, the seat goes back down, and then you can grab onto the tab up here and pull the seat down to make a sort of flat space, but not really. It's kind of like that. Uh, so it doesn't go totally flat. It lets you get at the tire changing tools. You can put some things back here and you can see the subwoofer for the JBL sound system is right here. Um, this does obviously come down, but I was looking for a way to load a big uh, garment bag for the weekend, a big, you know, weekend trip bag sort of thing. And I ended up flipping the seat bottom up and just kind of resting it awkwardly. There was no great way to have, uh, have a large bag back here if I didn't want to put it on these beautiful seats. So that was one thing that I was a little surprised by. Uh, looking at the door panels for just a second, you do have some nice storage right here under the door pull and window switch and this little wood trim. And then of course, space for a couple more water bottles, some you know maps, uh, books, iPhone, whatever you want down here. You'll notice these do have the power retractable running boards. You can turn those on and off like I showed through the 
uh, dashboard. And then looking in the bed, this is a fairly typical truck bed. Uh, not a whole lot going on here that's super remarkable. You've got, of course, a bunch of tie downs. You've got LED lights. You've got power connectors. You do have a camera up here as part of the high center mounted stop lamp. And that does let you look into the bed while you are driving or towing. So it's nice to be able to check back there and make sure your cargo hasn't shifted or that everything is still tied down and where it belongs. And then finally, moving down here to the trailer hitch, like I mentioned earlier, this is where the magic happens for some of us. Pretty typical two inch receiver. Here's spot for your safety chains. And then you do have your wiring here for both seven pin and four pin. So pretty nice and easy, pretty typical setup. And with all that, let's get behind the wheel of this 2022 Toyota Tundra and see how it is towing my enclosed trailer. All right, so let's talk towing with this 2022 Toyota Tundra. Uh, you'll notice I'm dressed, of course, differently from the rest of this video. I am leaving Hyperfest at VIR. Was just there for four days, had the best time, of course. If you have not been and you are on the East Coast and can get to VIR, uh, plan to come next year. It is always such a blast. I'll be there, would love to have you join us. Uh, also, your boy won spec three today in our, uh, our Sunday afternoon race, so uh, kudos me. But uh, that was a fun race. It was unfortunately not without some carnage. More to come on that in a different video. But let's talk Tundra and towing. I was, I was generally impressed with it on the way down here. And then I discovered a second tow mode that I thought might change my tune a little bit. So you've got a tow haul button here. And then you've got your drive mode dial. And I, of course, just push tow haul because I'm towing and hauling. So that's what I want to do. Well, it turns out you can actually twist the drive mode dial and you have a tow mode plus. But of course I'm hauling heavier than I might, you know, this trailer being, let's say 7,000 pounds uh, is more than half the truck's rated weight. So I figure the, the more plus of the two tow modes is the better one to use. Um, so far things seem about the same. Uh, the one complaint that I have that neither tow mode seems to do much about is when you're braking in this Tundra, uh, you don't get a lot of engine braking. There's not a lot of automatic downshifts that, that you know, help engine brake and slow the truck without using so much of the actual physical brakes. Um, other brands do that better. Ford in particular has a really good set of programming uh, for the sake of automatic downshifts while you're towing. Uh, beyond that though, there is a lot to like. Uh, first of all, starting with the body control and the suspension. So Toyota moved to an independent suspension on this truck, coil spring rear, and uh, uh, load leveling suspension on the back. Not all of them have the load leveling. This one being a 1794 does. So uh, when you hook the trailer up, it does of course want to compensate. Um, had a little bit of a challenge unhooking the trailer, of course, till I read the owner's manual. Uh, you have to disable the rear air suspension to make sure it doesn't just keep pumping itself up as you raise the trailer tongue jack to get the trailer off the truck. So once I got that all disabled, of course, it was easy. But as far as how it rides, um, the body control is excellent with the trailer, uh, smooths out all of these imperfections in the highway. And when you get, you know, dips and bumps in the road where normally you get the back of the truck and the trailer kind of doing one of these, um, you don't get that here. It really does a nice, nice job uh, as far as keeping the ride very steady and uh, very controlled. So kudos to Toyota on the suspension and the ride quality. Uh, steering is about as good as I would expect for a half ton truck. Um, nothing really surprising to report there. Braking, beyond the fact that you don't get that auto engine braking bit, uh, I think braking is generally pretty good here. Um, now, one thing I didn't love about the regular tow mode while I was towing down here is I thought the truck was a little laggy to respond to throttle inputs and it wanted to be in too high of a gear for how much weight I was pulling. Um, it, it just took a lot. I had to really boot the throttle to make a downshift for a hill or something. And uh, thankfully it seems like tow mode plus, uh, it, you know, the truck realizes, oh, you've got more weight, we should respond accordingly. And uh, it does seem a little bit better if I, you know, boot it to pass. Now, as far as power is concerned, I still don't think this feels as sprightly as a Ford EcoBoost V6. Um, Ford has that twin turbo 3.5 EcoBoost, which I have said before, I really adore while towing. It's like, it's like a freight train with a trailer. Uh, this is not that. I think it's a mix of throttle tuning. I think it's a mix of gearing, both in the transmission and the, the axle gearing. Um, it is not bad, it is not slow, but it doesn't feel quite as spry, uh, but that's okay. Um, as far as 
everything else here. Toyota has some really nice extra touches. The first I wanna mention is just overall visibility. So uh, while I do think the seating position is a touch low versus the height of the dash, everything else around you is really, really good. And that matters, especially when you're backing up a trailer and looking over your shoulders to try and see where it's gonna go. Um, it is really, you know, the, the window line, the, the door sills are pretty nice and low. Um, really nice and easy to back a trailer. They also have their trailer backing uh, technology here, which I admittedly have not tried because I have not needed to try it yet. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. As far as other touches, Toyota finally, they have done some nice stuff to get their towing tech up to, you know, where the rest of the competition is. Um, one of the best things they've done is they've made it very easy to set up your trailer in the dashboard controls. Uh, you can go in and tell it what type of trailer you have, tell it how many axles you have, tell it uh, what type of brakes you have, if they're electric, electric over hydraulic, or if you don't need the brake controller, if you've got surge brakes. Um, so really like that, it's super easy to just click through a couple things on the screen and set that up. And then once you've done that, uh, it also has automatic blind spot monitoring for the truck and the trailer. And unlike some other trucks, you don't have to tell it how long the trailer is. It can figure that out for you, which is really, really nice. You just hook the trailer up and go. It doesn't sound like a huge deal uh, if you just have one trailer, but if you've got, you know, for example, a car trailer and a boat and a utility trailer for yard work or something, having it just automatically figure that out when you plug the trailer in is fantastic. So that is really, really nice. Other thing, in this case, this Tundra has the optional uh, tow mirrors. So these have both the regular mirror and a lower uh, convex piece that uh, you know can be angled down a little bit to show you more of the trailer, more of the truck, whatever. They are also power extending. So there's a button down by your left knee that will slide them in and out. So really nice to have them all the way out if you're obviously pulling the trailer, easy to pull them back in when you're not, or if you know, you're going through a toll booth or something that's a little more narrow, that's really easy. I do wish that you could adjust the convex lower portion with the power mirror controls. You cannot do that. You can only adjust the top big portion that you're used to. And with all that, thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. You can give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Out Motorsports. And if you'd like to connect with a community of LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, head over to outmotorsports.com. We would love to have you over there. Please stay safe, be well. See you for the next one.